Hi everyone, Lady Rose here has promised to talk about the full moon that will be happening on Friday, uh, November 19th. Now, just as a little reminder, the full moon is not just a one and done. The full moon is three nights, just as every other stage of the moon is too. The new moon is also three nights and, and that sort of thing. So as they go through the stages, she stays there for a few days. So you have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to celebrate the new moon, to do any kind of ritual work or any kind of wishing work that you want to do or magical work. Um, those of you that made donations on the last Mystic Monday got a special secret uh, ritual that you can do under this particular full moon to bring money and cash and abundance into your life. So that speaking of which, that is what this full moon is about. So this full moon that's happening November 19th, in case you didn't watch the Mystic Monday, it is the second last moon in an eclipse. So when it's in an eclipse, it's a very powerful kind of energy. Now it can be powerful both negatively and positively. So what I'm trying to do when I tell you guys about what's going on with the moon is I'm trying to get you to embrace this energy in a positive way and start working with it as opposed to against it. Because a lot of times we tend to work against it. Um, people who say, oh, the full moon really affects me. I, I get emotional or I get headaches or whatever are, are people that tend to be working with that energy in a negative way. I used to get headaches around the full moon all the time and then I figured out f through being taught and reading and all this kind of stuff, all this study, is I learned how to work with the full moon and with the new moon. And when I figured out how to do that, the headaches went away. <laughs> so I don't get headaches at the full moon anymore, thank goodness, um, because I've learned or if I do, I mean, it's not like I never do, but once in a while I'll get a little twinge. I'll be like, okay, I'm working with this energy in a, in a way that's working against it as opposed to um, with it. So the moon, or the moon is a great way to figure out what kind of energy you should have around you because the earth is in that energy. It's being affected, all the waters, and we're basically big bags of water walking around. Um, and so it affects us, um, you know, and how it influences how we are and all that kind of stuff. But again, it's it's not bad or good. It's the way you handle that energy that makes it bad or good, quote unquote. So this particular new moon is in the sign of Taurus and it is an eclipse full moon. So and like I said, it's the second last um moon in an eclipse. The next new moon will also be in an eclipse. But this is the last full moon in eclipse for 2021. It's a very powerful one because it's one that, um, because it's in Taurus, can change your life, financially speaking, in very dramatic ways. So it's not like every time it's in Taurus, there's an eclipse full moon or anything. Um, so I would take advantage of this if you want to increase your income, if you want to change the way your income comes in, so changing jobs, if you want to change something financially speaking, if you want to get rid of a debt and have the money to pay off a credit card or whatever it might be, whatever way you want to change financially, you can make it as big or small as you want. And this is the time if you want big changes, big changes can happen. And one thing that's good to do is because money is often a very emotional subject, it's always good to kind of challenge yourself and really seek to see how your attitude is towards money. Do you feel it's the root of all evil? Do you feel, you know, like you, do you resent people that have money versus those that have not, that sort of thing. So it's always good to be aware of your money, uh, 
attitude towards money because this will very much affect how you will work with money energy. And that is what this full moon is all about, money energy. Now, depending on where your sign is. So most of you know where your sun sign is, but when I'm gonna read out the signs, I start with Aries, because Aries is the first sign of the zodiac that starts on the first day of spring. For the zodiac, the new year starts on the first day of spring. And that is the sign of Aries. Now, also too, whatever I read for each sign will also affect your rising sign. So not everybody knows your their rising sign. So you can type in your birthday, you need a location and a time, you can send that to me and I can tell you what your rising sign is. Um, if you go to my Facebook page and message me there, so my Facebook page will be in the, the comments or in the description below, but you can find me at Goddess Garage Tarot Parlor and I can tell you what your rising sign is if you want me to look it up or you can go to a free website that will do a free sort of birth chart and just give you the graph part of it and it usually can tell you what it is. Some are more complicated than others. So if you're having a hard time with some of these free websites that will spit out your whole birth chart because that's not what you need. You just need the part that's called your signature. So your star signature is your sun. So it's the one when people ask you what your sign is, that's what you reply with. I'm an Aries, I'm a Capricorn, whatever it might be. Then there's your moon and then there's your um, rising. So it's, and the reason it's called a signature is because your son is like your first name. And sometimes you're a cusp baby. That's a whole other thing. I'll explain it in another video. But um, some of us have two first names. Um, just like some people have two middle names kind of thing, right? So the sun sign is your first name. And your moon sign is your middle name. And then your rising sign is your last name. So you are way more than just your first name. You are also your middle and last names. And the rising sign is your last name, so to speak, in this analogy. And it can actually have a bigger effect on you than just your sun sign. So it's good to know your sun sign and this is how you're going to be affected. But if you also know your rising sign, then it's great. Now, some of us have double rising signs, like I'm an Aries Taurus, um, Aries Virgo. So Aries is, in, is my moon. Aries is my main sun, but I'm a cusp, so I'm an Aries Taurus cusp. And then Virgo is my last name, so to speak, my rising sign. So when, if I were listening to this report, I would be very aware of what the Virgo reading is about, because that's my rising sign. And I would also incorporate some of the Aries as well, because that's my first main name, not my follow-up name kind of thing, because I'm a Taurus as well. Um, because I'm an Aries who has Taurus tendencies, but I am an Aries <laughs> in Sun. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too complicated. <laughs> but we're going to get to each of the signs and see what the moon is going to bring for you, this money moon. Okay, so for Aries, and it, it's what I do is I look at which house it's going to affect for these particular signs because as the moon goes through it also affects different houses and that sort of thing. I am going to be doing an astrology kind of uh, surface um, course hopefully soon so hopefully you'll be able to kind of know what these are but basically your birth chart is a circle it's a pie graph right so and each of the pieces of pie there's 12 pieces of pie because they represent 12 different houses that cover and affect different aspects of our life, like how we treat money, how we have families, what were our siblings gonna be like, what are our personalities going to be like, and we picked out where each of the planets were going to be and what influence they were gonna have and all that kind of stuff, but I don't wanna go into a full course here. So the Aries, everybody who's Aries out there, whether it's your sun, which I am, or your rising, if you know your rising. It is affecting your second house. And your second house is your house of values. It is the house of wealth, the house of actual money um, and building of values. So this is a very important money moon for anyone who is Aries sun or Aries rising. But what's even more important is balance. 
It's very important that you maintain balance in it as an Aries. That's not our go-to if, if anybody out there is a, an Aries. So balance is very important, both in what you do for yourself and what you do for others as far as money goes um, for this full moon. Um, it's a great time to reflect on your worth and what you ask to be paid um, you know, whatever uh, you ask to be paid, whether you're an entrepreneur and you want, I want $100 for this, or if you're working as an employee and, you know, I want to be paid, you know, 20 bucks an hour or whatever, um, people will pay what you ask for. But are you asking for enough? Have you undervalued yourself? So this is a good time to really reflect on that and really gain on that. Because if you're an entrepreneur, this might be a good time to increase your prices a little because COVID has caused a lot of extra expenses. So therefore, it might be a good time to up some of your um, prices to reflect that kind of thing. Um, and maybe you're not valuing yourself enough. Also, if you're an employee, this is a great time to um, ask for a raise because if you ask for it, you will get it. This is also a good time if you're on a job interview, if you're looking for a whole new job, and you're on a job interview, you know, and they start discussing salary or payment or whatever, ask for what you want and, you know, what you really want, not what you think is okay to ask for, what you really want, because whatever you ask for, you will get. So keep that in mind, um, those of you that are Aries out there. Also, too, for Aries, if there's any major purchases that need to be made, now is a great time to do it because you'll either get a really good deal, you'll save some money, or they'll throw in lots of extras or whatever it is. It's a good time for you to make bit major purchases. And if you've been um, controlled somehow by someone financially speaking, like they hold the purse strings and you always have to go and ask for whatever, like if you're in a couple where the one is the main controller of the money, now is a good time to ask to, or to break free from that, not to ask, but to break free from that. Rarely is an Aries controlled in that way, but sometimes it happens. But if you are one of, in one of those partnerships, now is a good time to break away from that because it will, it will be successful. Um, now to, uh, and don't forget, don't get too emotional about money because you might be feeling very emotional about money as an Aries as well. Um, so, you know, be be aware of that. Don't put the emotion into money because then you won't be making smart decisions. You'll make smarter decisions if you're more in your head as opposed to your heart for this full moon Aries as far as money goes, okay? Now, Taurus, so those of you who are Taurus in your sun or rising, um, it's affecting your first house. And your first house is the house of you, of your actual personality, of how you look physically, that sort of thing. Um, so it's all very well to be focused on someone else. But once a year, the full moon reminds you that you are also, uh, that you also need to focus on yourself. So right now, um, if you're Taurus, and <laughs> if this is your go to, it's a good time to make purchases for you that will create happiness for you, that will focus on you. Don't worry about buying for other people, buy for yourself. I know that sounds selfish, but really that's where your financial changes can really happen. Um, also setting some aside, Tauruses are good, you're builders at that. So instead of giving away all the time, so you're not so much looking for those giveaway moments, you're looking for those moments to tuck money away. So, you know, the five bucks you were going to give to, you know, whatever, you know, those change boxes that they're always collecting money for, put it in your bank account instead. Put it in your savings account or your rainy day account or whatever it is. It's it, This is the full moon to change that so that you have some savings, so you have a nest egg going, you know, make those kind of purchases for yourself. Um and also remember to say yes when people offer to help. So if someone wants to help you, financially speaking, it's a good time to say yes if, if you need that help. Um, 
what else? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, and again, too, Taurus might feel a little emotional about money as well. So again, you need to tend to be more in your head than your heart. So it's a good time to go over your investments as well and make sure that they're producing as well as you would like them to. This is a good time to make those changes if you want to make some adjustments or whatever. But again, think with your head because Tauruses do tend to think with their hearts first and then their heads so think with your head first as far as um, uh, money goes and take those emotions out of there and find the financial planner or the banker that's really good for you um, that works best with you because maybe the one you've got hasn't really been serving you well but oh but we're friends it's okay it's money it's business it's not it's not anything against them but and or you know Call them up and say, hey, we need to make some adjustments because um, I want this to perform better. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now on to Gemini. So Gemini, the storytellers of the Zodiac. Your, if you're rising Gemini or your sun sign is in Gemini, the 12th house is being affected. And your 12th house is your house of undoing. Um, it's sort of where our secret fears lie. Um, it can be our prison, it can be our limitations, that sort of thing. So whatever fear you have around money, this is a good time to kind of work through that and um, to face those fears. Um, but life has probably felt very busy for you recently. Um, and, you know, you have to take some time out. And again, reflect on that fear that you have of money. Now, is it fear of having too much responsibility? Is it fear of, um, I just don't know what to do with it? Is it fear of getting more, like you're afraid to ask for more, whether it's you know a product you're making or service you're providing, or whether there's a boss involved and you have to ask her for a raise or something like that. Um, the full moon in your 12th house is going to allow you to work those fears out should you want to, so that you are able to handle money in a better way. Um, for many people, it comes at a time when they're feeling a bit down. So you might be feeling a little depressed about your finances right now. Maybe you're feeling a little worried, like Christmas is coming and I got bills to pay and la la la. Well, this is the time to let go of those fears that you can work through those fears. Um, so it comes when you're feeling a little down. However, you're probably just exhausted from the demands of daily life. So don't let the little things get you down and make a plan. This is a time to make a plan so that you don't come undone come, you know, Christmas or New Year's or whatever. Take some time out. If you know how to meditate, um, go for it. Try to do meditation, maybe do some journaling around why you have this fear of of money or handling of money, that sort of thing. You need to strike a balance between working and time out and figuring out um, the balance in your financial situation as well. Okay, and now we go into Cancer. So Cancer, it is affecting your 11th house and this is the house of friendship. Now Cancers are notorious for being very nurturing, very loving, very caring. Um, friends sometimes take advantage of that love, care, and um, nurturing quality that you guys tend to have. So, like I said, it's the house of friendship. So, it's tempting for everyone to focus on their own pleasures. Life is for living and having fun after all. However, this month's full moon in your 11th house is reminding you that you need to find a balance between indulging yourself and remembering that people in your life also need some attention. Now, you might find that because it's the money moon that um, friends are asking for financial help. Maybe you've gotten yourself into trouble because you've loaned friends some money and they haven't paid you back yet and you're getting to that awkward stage of, hey, you know, are you ever gonna give me that 50 bucks or that $300 I loaned you back? Cause I kind of need it now, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, 
so whatever you do for other people right now, financially speaking, will give you karma points, which is always good. So for you, Cancer, there's a couple of different things that are going on. One, it's a great time to pay it forward. Take advantage of those pay it forward moments. Take advantage of the guy that's sitting on the sidewalk asking for extra change. Give it to them because you will earn big karma bucks for that. However, when it comes to friends, you'll find their hands are out and maybe you've gone down this road before of loaning friends money and now you don't get it back. Um, so now's the time to kind of call in those debts. Um, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen now that those debts will be paid. Also too, there is a phrase that I came across many, many years ago and I stand by it. So I always say, I never loan friends money. I will give them as much as I can afford and nothing more. And if it comes back, that's great. But I always loan with, with it being a gift in mind. So don't loan any friends any money that is going to leave you short or that, you know, I'm loaning money out of the Christmas fund, let's say, for instance, or whatever, something I've got tucked away and hopefully they'll get it back to me, but they don't and that destroys a friendship um, really fast. Money is a fast way to destroy a friendship. So I, if my friend needs money, like if they come to me and say, I need a hundred bucks and maybe that week I'm, you know, a little tight, I'll be like, I can give you 20 and you don't even have to mention it again if you don't want to. If you want to pay me the 20 bucks back, great. But if you don't, it's not going to lose our friendship because I'm, I'm giving it to you. Um, it's a bonus for me if I get the 20 bucks back. So I might not give them the whole hundred because I don't have it. And if I gave it to them, maybe I have it, but if I gave it to them, there would be some resentment if I didn't get it back. So I live by the principle of I only loan money to friends that I can afford to give away. <laughs> and I don't lose a friendship over it kind of thing. Also too, this is a bad time to be buying or selling to friends. So if you're a business or if you're having a garage sale, don't invite your friends, never sell to friends or family, right? Um, like even the business I'm in, I don't encourage my friends and family to come see me because I don't want there to be any animosity because sometimes friends and family come and then they expect, well, aren't I going to get a deal? Like, are you going to just give it to me? You know, your service for free or a discount or whatever. Friends and family have weird ideas in their head. And, you know, I'm a working woman, so it's like, well, I'd love to give you a discount, but I still got to pay my rent here and my bills like everybody else, right? Like, it's not like I would walk into their work and say, can you give me part of your paycheck, you know, because I'm here <laughs> kind of thing, right? I mean, yes, if a friend or family came in, I would probably give them the family discount, right? But you know, it's, I don't encourage it. Like, I'm not like, oh, hey, do you want to come in and see me? If they come, they come. If they don't, they don't. And I'm not insulted either way. Um, I take no offense at that. Um, so cancer in particular, be careful. Don't sell to friends or family or buy from friends or family this full moon, this whole month kind of thing, if that should present itself. Because it, it might be there because it's going to present itself. So I would avoid that. Um, so now we're into Leo. So if you're Leo sun, um, if your sign is Leo or if you're Leo rising, the house that's being affected for you guys is the 10th house. And I think the 10th house, if I'm correct, is about community. Um, oh yeah, it's about, uh, well, the 10th house is your kingdom and it's about your social standing and community and what you do for the community and all that kind of stuff. So for Leo, um, you've been hiding yourself away, which is a u unusual thing for a Leo to do. Um, the sky suggests, um, that it's time for you to get out into the public again. Um, you know, COVID is kind of 
held a lot of that back, but things are opening up again. So Leo, it's time to step back into the spotlight where you are happiest. You love to be in the spotlight and you do well in the spotlight. Um, so definitely that's where your money is. Whether it's you're a performer of some kind, get out there and perform, or whether it's, you know, at a business meeting and you need to stand out and stand up and let your ideas be known because that's where your money is going to be coming from. Um, the 10th house is the house of career and it's telling you it's time to invest some emotional energy in your professional life. If a work situation is coming to an end, something new will come in its place very soon. So this too is also a great time for you, Leo, if you want to change jobs. This is a perfect time to do it. Now, it doesn't mean you have to quit the job you're at. Maybe there's mo mobility upwards. Maybe you are looking at a totally different industry or a different company or whatever. But if there's some change that you want to do as far as your career goes, now is the time to do it. It will be very favorable for you. So keep that in mind. Now, Virgo, Virgo, your ninth house is being affected by this money stuff. So journeys is the sort of key word for the ninth house. It's the house of travel. It's the house of philosophy, that sort of thing. So that it might be a good time to plan a trip and pay for a trip, um, maybe over the winter months or something when you, when you want to get away kind of thing. Um, but personal growth, religion, philosophy, publishing, the internet, travel and study, that's all in one house and that's the ninth house. And these are the subjects that are looming large for you. So if there's um, a book you want to buy, now's a good time to do it. If there's a course you're wanting to take, now's a good time to sign up for it. You'll have the money and it will help to um, enhance either your career and get you more money or help you add to your menu of services or skills or whatever it might be. Be honest with yourself and uh, question yourself. Have you been fussing too much over the details of your latest problems or tasks and stop fussing so much and take those steps? Because for you, um, Virgo, it's very important to take some steps. And I know as a Virgo, you want to get lost in the details and Virgos are notorious nitpickers. Stop nitpicking and take those steps. It's time to look at the big picture. Virgos are very good at the small picture and the details and that's great, awesome, but it's time for you to come take a step back and look at the bigger picture of where you are and where you want to go. Um, because now is a time for movement. You can go where you want to go, but you have to do it now. Um, this is a great time to try something that's beyond your usual everyday realm. Now we're into Libra. So Libra, the scales, the balance, the justice. Um, so Libra's year house that's being affected is your eighth house. And the eighth house is that of death and the house of reincarnation taboo subjects, darkness, occult, shadow work, all of that is in this eighth house. So for you, Libra, the full moon is about finding a balance between give and take. Now, Libras are usually very good at finding balance. They like balance. They don't like it when it's not balanced. So maybe you've been going through a bit of a phase where things aren't quite as balanced and so you're feeling a little off kilter. Well, this full moon is a great time to regain that balance, in particular balance with money. So hopefully you find that balance of more is coming in as opposed to going out, or at least get a plan so that that happens and your scales start to get balanced for you financially speaking. Um, another thing, uh, Libras, that you've been doing is you've been doing too much lately. Um, and you've been wearing yourself thin or saying yes to too many things. And when you give too much, you don't know how to t how to take and how can the universe send you an abundant stream of good things if you're not receiving them without a fight because you're too busy over here giving, giving, giving or spreading yourself thin, that sort of thing. So now is a good time to attend to practical financial matters as well, Libras, and don't 
get yourself busy because you're trying to avoid it. So practical financial matters, like for you, it's not big financial changes necessarily. It's like, how much is that Starbucks costing me every day? And do I need it every day? And you know, that sort of thing. Or if I want to put that into my budget, put it into your budget so that you're not wondering where'd that extra 80 bucks go that I got or whatever, right? Um, so it's also time to attend to paying off debts. It's a great time for you to do that. Do more of that than you have done previously over the last quarter. It's also a good time for investing um, into your financial world and seeing what's going on and getting a game plan. But really your focus is on the debts and the money that might be slipping through the cracks. So very practical kind of financial plans and be honest about them because a lot of times we'll be like, well, here's hydro and here's the phone bill and we forget about the coffee every morning or the lunch every Saturday with grandma or whatever it might be. So keep that in mind. Watch those practical pennies that might be slipping through the cracks and put a focus on your debts. And that is your gift is that your debt can go away. Um, if you put energy and focus there in letting it go and releasing it. So the waning moon that follows after this full moon is very important for you Libras as well because that's a great time to release debts because the waning moon is the one that's um, going shrinking. So if you want your debts to shrink along with the moon, then this is the time to start that plan and to get it so that you're your debts start to shrink for you, which is always a good thing. <laughs> okay, now we're into Scorpio. Scorpio, your seventh house is being affected, and this is the house of partnerships. So partnerships of all kinds. It could be your spouse, your life partner. It could be a business partner. Any kind of partnership or cooperation that you're part of, that's what this house is about, and that's where the financial kind of changes can happen. So I said seventh house. Okay, seventh house. Um, okay, so it's time for you to take the focus off of you and focus on other people. And it could mean like it's time to focus on your family and seeing where your family is financially speaking. If you're in kind of a, some kind of lifetime partnership with a wife, husband, spouse, partner, whatever you call them. Um, and it's time for uh, you to sort of invest in them perhaps as well. Maybe they've got a business that's about to explode and it's time for you to invest in that kind of thing. Or it's time for you to kind of reassess how your partnership is working. Perhaps if you're in a business partnership of some kind, it's time for you both to sit down, take a look at the business. Are you both still on the same page? Are you seeing the same goals, that sort of thing? It's always good to reevaluate to make sure that we're both going in the same direction and we're not working against each other. Um, uh, there needs to be a balance between the two of you, whether it's, you know, a lifetime partner or a business partner. Um, and it always feels like someone is going to need your attention this full moon or in this next month. And that's okay. Allow yourself to give them attention. It doesn't mean you're going to be giving them money necessarily, even though this is a financial moon. It could be that you're giving financial advice as well um, and that sort of thing. So keep that in mind. The full moon will also, for you, bring closures. So if there's a debt you want to finally get off your plate, um, then do that. If you're, you know, a member of the jelly club of the month kind of thing, and it's like, oh, yeah, every time you get a new jelly, you think, oh, I got to cancel that. Now's the time to get rid of those things for yourself because um, it will just add to the bank account because now you're not paying the 10 bucks for the jelly of the month club kind of thing. Um so, and if you need to end a business partnership, now's a good time to do that. It will go a lot smoother for this full moon. Um, and you can proceed with the knowledge that you're finishing things up at the right time, celestially speaking. So the stars are aligned. If you've gotten yourself into some kind of investment, some kind of co-op, some kind of partnership, some kind of timeshare that you want out of, 
this is the time to do it, Scorpio, um, whether you're Scorpio Sun or Scorpio Rising. So now we're for the Sagittarians out there, whether it's Saggy Sun or Saggy Rising. Your sixth house is being affected, and this is your house of health. Um, so the house of health. That's all there is, health. health. <laughs> so if you're one of the lucky ones, this full moon, when you see yourself, um, this is the full moon when you will see yourself for who you really are, financially speaking. But there's some health in there because health is a great thing when it's good and it can be financially devastating when it's not good. So we kind of take advantage of always having this good health and always being able to earn money. So this is a time to kind of really realistically look at that. Um, and, and realistically understanding, like, look at your genetics, you know, d you know, did your father have diabetes? Did your mother have, you know, whatever? And is this something that's going to maybe slow you down um, or disable you from being able to earn money? So should I be putting money aside for those rainy days? Should I maybe be looking at critical illness insurance before the diagnosis comes? just so that when it does, or if it does, um, then I'm covered, right? I know finances often bring up these terrible subjects we don't even want to manifest, but it's always good to be prepared for a rainy day. Um, and, you know, this is all about the daily life you lead. Are you living healthily? Um, are you exercising, getting enough sleep? Now's the time to invest also and spend your money on health things. Like, is it time to, you know, get some exercise equipment or buy the gym membership? You know, spend your money on the fruits and vegetables as opposed to the cookies and cakes and things like that, right? Like really take a look at where's my money going? What am I spending it on? Is it healthy choices that I'm making? You know, you don't have to do it all at once. It's not like, you know, you got to clear your cupboards of every single donut crumb and then have only apples and carrots for the rest of your life. But make it small changes. This is the time to make those small changes to invest that little bit extra. Yes, apples are expensive, but how expensive is it if you eat crackers instead and can't work? Because, you know, it's not the crackers that did it, obviously, but, you know, it, 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 they didn't help, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so this is the full moon for your an annual chance to start taking care of yourself mind, body, and spirit, and investing money in those things. Is there a retreat you've been wanting to go on, you know, to just take some time out and relax and get refreshed and recharged? Now's the time to do that. So those are some of the choices that you need to decide on and make for yourself, uh, Sagittarians, to make sure that your health is always going to be good. You guys are normally very healthy. Um, you're very active on a normal basis. So just make sure that all the boxes are checked and that you're doing what you can to stay healthy. Um, all right, now Capricorns, Capricorns. It's your fifth house that's being affected. And your fifth house is all about children, um, your house of pleasure, it's the house of creativity, artistic pursuits. Um, and artistic pursuits in all levels, whether it's in the written form, whether it's in the musical form, whether it's in the painting or knitting or crafting form kind of thing. There's lots of ways to be creative. And now that's where you can kind of make those investments. And of course, children are the ultimate act of creation. So that's why children are there. And it's the house of pleasure because it's also the house outside of the house of, I think it's the seventh house, it's also about, no, it's the eighth house, death, but it's about taboo sex. This is about let's have a family sex kind of thing. So um, this, this full moon uh, is taking place in your house of self-expression, um, which is about the creativity and whatnot. Um, so there's a whole lot of emotion for you going on, which is very unusual for a Capricorn. Um, their waters do run deep, but they don't usually show a lot of surface 
action. It, you got to go real deep with a Capricorn to see any kind of swirling and twirling of emotions. Um, for some, it's about pouring your heart out. For others, it's about the joy a child brings or pouring emotion into a creative project. So really, this is a great time to invest in your creative side, buy some of those art supplies and change your life in some way because not it's not like oh go home and buy some art supplies and paint you know a picture and people are going to flock to your door to buy all your artistic pursuits but it's in that artistic creative energy that you find solutions to financial problems that you find that you're able to express yourself better in your job in your career and therefore create a bigger bank account or a bigger paycheck for yourself which then translates into a bigger bank account and between this you need to find a balance between yourself and your friends as well don't neglect them totally so in your artistic creative pursuits don't do it like necessarily all alone share it with others um, and this is your challenge for your coming month to be creative um, Capricorns can be very creative um, very emotional on paper and in picture and whatnot, but it takes them some time to get there. So give yourself that space and room to be creative because that's where the answers lie for you and that's where financial changes happen for you because when you get creative, artistically speaking, you can be creative in all other areas and for some reason, you're needing to be creative in your financial house but you do that through your house of creation. Um, now Aquarius, you are having the fourth house affected. So the fourth house is about um, home and family, it's about our parents, that sort of thing. So the fourth house Aquarius, let's see. Um, you've been working like a dog lately to achieve some personal goals or the opposite, you've been very depressed because you would like to be working on personal goals, but you just don't have the get up and go to do it. So it's either you've been a couch potato and you're feeling guilty about it, or you've been really, really working hard on personal goals. Um, but you're almost at a standstill. Like, even if you've been working hard on your um, personal goals, you feel like you've been spinning your wheels. So it's sort of, you've got depression for one reason or another, and I don't, I'm not talking clinical depression. I'm talking, you're just feeling down, unmotivated right now, because either you've been just a couch potato or you feel like I've been working really hard, but now I'm spinning my wheels and I'm not getting anywhere. Um, so you're entering a cycle when you need to find a balance between your outer aims and your inner needs. Um, so take a look at your relationships, uh, in particular your family relationships, and ascertain whether everything is running as smoothly as you'd like it. If not, this is the time to pour some energy into that part of your life. And it's through working with your family, whether it's your parents, your children, your siblings, your aunts or uncles, cousins, whatever it might be, it's through family that you either find um, a way of doing things differently financially or you get some kind of financial reward from that. So keep that in mind. Family is very important for your financial situation. And if you're a mother or a father and you have children, obviously if you're a mother or father, you have children, but <laughs> now's the time to focus on them um, for your financial turnaround. So it could be that you help them out or um, that you're investing in their college so that they can take care of you when you're old or whatever it might be. Um, but definitely family is the focus for you um, for financial reasons. Um, so keep that in mind. It's gonna come in weird ways because things always come to Aquarians in weird ways. Um, so Pisces, your third house is being uh, affected. So Pisces rising or Pisces sun. And it's about um, brothers and sisters, so about siblings in particular, and that's your house of communication. And the reason why brothers and sisters are included in that is because often our siblings are our first playmates, our first um, sort of human beings that we create relationships and communicate with. Um, our mother and father are obviously our primary ones, 
and we depend and lean on them, but we don't depend and lean on our brothers and sisters in that same way. So that's why these are our first friendships, so to speak. Um, they have no authority. I mean, they, of course, I'm an older sister. I'm the oldest of seven. So, of course, I pretended like I had authority. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the boss of you. That's, yeah, yeah, mom said. <laughs> <laughs> but really, not really. <laughs> so, you know, those are our first friendships as well. So that's why they're included in the third house of communication. So Pisces, for you, communication is very, very big, um, financially speaking. So this is a time of speaking up. Um, it's all very well dreaming of the great escape, and Pisces love the great escape. They will float into the ether if you let them. Um, but you have to focus on the details. Uh, so the details are important um, for your communication. So you need to speak clearly, concisely, and articulately. Um, the full moon is reminding you that, that things need to be taken care of close to home as well as much as you want to travel now's not the time for you to travel or to plan traveling now's the time to stick close to home and take care of those things close to home it's also a, rem a reminder to express yourself if uh if you haven't been honest about how you feel and there's a lot of emotion around money as always express how you feel about emotion with your partner um with your business partner or your life partner whichever you know, if you have one or both or whatever. Um, and this is also uh, a time to start to say your piece about how you would like to see things financially, again, to make sure you're both on the same page. And if you have a job where you're employed, this is a good time to tell your boss that I want the corner office or I want a bigger paycheck or I want these perks or, or whatever it might be. Um, it's also a good time to sort things out, financially speaking, with your siblings, um, whether it's, you know, asking for that money back again. Siblings are like friends. Don't loan them money that you don't want to give them um, outright. If it comes back to you, it's a bonus. If it doesn't, it's all good, right? But now's the time if there have been some breakdowns, uh, about you know bridges burning and stuff financially speaking now's the time to repair those bridges um, but in particular it's time for you to take care of things close to home so if there's like something that the home needs that you're living in then now's the time to get it if there's a renovation that needs to be done that the money would be better put into that than a trip so to speak um also time now like i said to ask your boss for those those extra perks, um, you know, that sort of thing. So hopefully that helped. There you go. The financial windfalls of the full moon. Those of you that donated also got the special secret link for full moon work that you can do. If you want that link, message me and you can find me on Facebook, Goddess Garage Tarot Parlor. And you can make a donation if you want that link as well, because I give you very specific steps of what to do to bring cold, hard cash, money abundance into your life under the three nights of this full moon. So it's not too late. Just let me know if you want to make a donation and you can make it in any size. You know, you can make a $5, $20, whatever you want to do. Um, donation. Okay, so I look forward to your messages. Good luck with this new moon. I hope it brings you all the abundance you wish for. Happy full moon. Bye.